Hey everybody, I hope you're well and you're having a good week so far. It's been a while and I've missed you guys. I've been away for about two weeks. I had lost my grandma. She went to be with the Lord. And so just needed some time to step away and grieve with our family um, and just surrender, you know, the next few weeks and months and years ahead without her to God. But I'm glad to be back now and we're continuing with our series on true Christian character. We're about halfway through, we're going to be done soon. And it's interesting because in many ways, um, this next character really describes my grandma and actually her tribute was the Beatitudes. So welcome back to Sitem Church Online. My name is Joyce Samondi Wahiga. Let's get into it. So Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Essentially this is saying that purity is a prerequisite to seeing God for he delights in a pure heart. And so the question is why? Why does God delight in a pure heart? Well, number one, your heart is who you really are. The secrets of your thoughts and your feelings, of your emotions, are not known to anyone else but you and God. And so our tendency is to appreciate that which we can see, right? It's the opposite of faith too when we think about it. But our tendency is to appreciate that which we can see, that which we can look at. And we tend to put our best foot forward and try to uphold certain images that people expect of us or that we set up for ourselves as who we are. But Brennan Manning, an American author and speaker once said, the temptation of the age is to look good without being good. And that completely describes what this is all about. God isn't impressed by all of that. He isn't phased by how well we look or how well we dress, how we talk, how we act. How we behave. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So who you really are the secrets of your thoughts and your feelings. Again, not known to others, but certainly known to yourself and to God. Secondly, God desires for our hearts to be pure. Yeah, It doesn't say blessed are the pure. He specifically says blessed are the pure in heart. So for us to be pure, our hearts must first be pure. And there are several verses that support this. Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 to 19 says, What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a man. Out of the heart come all of these vile things. Then we also have another scripture here, Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 to 34, which says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. As in, you can have a good tree, you cannot have a good tree and a bad fruit. They both go hand in hand. For out of the abundance, it continues to say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So this is a whole new standard altogether. It's not about putting on a show. It's not about adapting your behavior so that it can suit a certain situation. It's about, it's about us being genuine, about us being authentic, about us being true. This standard, what it's really saying is that murder begins in the heart. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus in the same chapter, Matthew chapter 5, 
taught, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. This same standard says that adultery begins in the heart. In the same sermon, Jesus said in verse 27, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. In both of these examples, Jesus was going beyond the law of the Old Testament to bring out what it really meant. Jesus was saying that their standard was simply just too low because they were only worried about actual murder. They were only worried about the actual or literal act of adultery. But he was saying that because God looks at the heart, if there is hate, you are guilty of murder. If there is lust, even a hint of it, you've already committed adultery. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, for me, this, this one, you guys, this, <laughs> this is hard. This is really hard. And it's calling for us to, honest, to just be so honest with ourselves, again, about who we really are and whether we can truly stand before God. True Christian character. Purity of heart leads to purity of worship, which leads to purity of life. If we are to have true Christian character, we cannot justify ourselves merely by what we do. But I didn't do this, I didn't say that, I didn't lie, I didn't steal, I didn't take. It's not merely about what we don't do. This beatitude is a reminder that God is concerned about the hate, the lust, the pride, the lies, the malice, the deceit in our hearts. And he is concerned about our attitudes, our motives as well. And he always has been. Without purity of heart, we won't see God. He is spirit and he desires for his worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so without purity, purity of heart specifically, we will not see God. And that, what does that mean? It means we won't even be admitted into his presence because sin and that filth of sin repulses him. So we can't even come into his presence, which then means we won't be able to encounter his holiness which then means we cannot experience the touch of his glory. Psalm 24 verse 3 to 4 says, Who shall descend, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify you, your hearts, you men of double mind. You men of double mind. God desires of us to have one mind. And we cannot fool him with good behavior in public and then bad behavior in private. Jesus isn't just concerned about you breaking the rules. He's not just concerned about breaking our bad habits. He's concerned about cleansing and purifying our dirty hearts. May the Lord help us to be pure in heart. Thank you so much for watching. I really trust and hope that this has challenged you as much as it has me. That this is why we say that salvation, you work at it with fear and trembling. It's not a destination, it's a journey. May the Lord help us as we work towards having true Christian character. Catch up with me again next week. We're going to be talking about true Christian character being people who are peacemakers. Until then, we'd love to take your questions. Reach out to us at Sitam Church Online on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can catch up with me as well at Joyce Mwondi. Until then, have a blessed week. Bye.